so three let's explore this thermal camera from top down. It's the module type which plugs into a smartphone, it uses a USB-C port and it's compatible with Android phones and iPhones. Here it says something about iPhones and the NFC touch here to download the app and some information here. The infrared resolution 256 by 192 and the frame rate is 25 Hz or frames a second. Thermal image super resolution. The temperature range minus 20 degrees Celsius to plus 550 degrees Celsius. Or the range in Fahrenheit and compatible with iOS, Android or Windows. But now of course let's take a look at it. It's a nice box. And this nice protective housing. There is some manual for it. Which doesn't really look complicated. And that's it. This one seems to be just some warning. And let's take a look at it. Here's the camera with the USB plug. And some USB cable for it. There are two cables. It seems like the extension for it, for USB-A, USB-C, and the iPhone connector. But I don't have an iPhone of course, so let's try this one. Okay, let's try this. Here's the downloaded file. Now it's installed. Let's agree and let's connect it. You can change the emissivity or the ambient temperature to let's say 22. Let's of course change the language for you to English. And now it's running. You can take pictures. You can record the video or just look at the display in real time. You have the center point measurement, the minimum and maximum reading, and this scale which you can lock or unlock. Here you can change the settings, the emissivity, ambience, temperature and distance. Here you can activate the timer, 3 seconds, 6 seconds. And here you can disable the auto shutter. Once every multiple seconds the shutter closes for about a second. This enables the thermal camera to self-calibrate and be more accurate, but could be annoying if you're trying to record the video, so you can disable it here. Manual shutter. You can do the calibration manually here. You can activate the microphone here. Burst shooting. Watermark. And there are multiple types of temperature measurement. You can do a dot measurement, basically add more dots to measure. You can use a line and measure on that line. It will show the highest and lowest reading on that line. A plane, now it shows the highest and lowest in that plane. A full image reading, which is actually activated as a default. And a trend. You draw a line and it basically shows the temperature on this line. can delete all. I typically reactivate the full image reading for the maximum and minimum. You can also use a picture in a picture and basically see the thermal image with the visible camera image and change the transparency of that image. You can of course align it. You can zoom it in and move it to basically align the two pictures. Of course there is quite a distance 
between the visible camera and the thermal camera, which you can of course offset by sliding the picture. You can connect the thermal camera via the cable and position it closer to the visible picture camera. And besides putting the transparent visible spectrum image over the thermal one, you can also shrink it and put it in the corner and set no transparency. Then you have the palette setting, white hottest, black hottest, and multiple other color settings. But of course I prefer this one, this one is the most familiar by far. A lot more settings here. The scale, you can change the contrast, detail, is a temperature alarm, high temperature alarm, low temperature alarm, markers, quite a lot of settings and functions here. You can of course rotate the image if you need, especially if the camera is mounted on a cable. You can also mirror the image. You can of course also plug the camera in the other way, and then the mirroring might be useful. Nice. Okay, let's put it how it was. It also has the font size setting. This is way more settings than I have ever seen on any thermal camera. Even more settings. The normal range from minus 20 to 150 degrees Celsius, or the high temperature range 150 to 550 degrees Celsius, or automatic. The high temperature range could be useful, for example, to measure the temperature of the tip of a soldering gun. Let's try it. Let's also test the line and plane measurement. 220 degrees Celsius, 250, 300. It's heating up. It's measuring the hottest in the whole picture and also the hottest on the line now. Can move the line on it. And see, it's colder here. It's hotter here. I can place it into the plane, 420 degrees Celsius now, that's probably as hot as it's going to get. And cooling down. Let's also try the automatic. Now it's cool, so it should switch into the low range, it's just 49 degrees. Now it's getting hot. Now it clicks, it's probably switching and now it's the high range, yes. Cooling down. Now it automatically went into the lower range. It can dynamically change the colors. This is the default setting. You can also set a custom mode with the highest and lowest temperature set manually. You can set the desired colors, custom colors. It also has a thermal imaging super resolution TISR function. Well, let's try it on a different device later. You can of course go back and see the gallery of the pictures and videos taken. So let's show the actual videos instead of showing them on the screen of the phone. Looking at circuit breakers in a box, you can see which breaker and which wires are loaded. You can easily locate a fault. You can locate which breaker and cable goes to the machine of your interest. Let's also add some measurement areas here. Combining the visible and the thermal video. The cast iron heater just started warming up. Light bulb. And a fluorescent fixture. Looking at a cast iron heater. And also an electric heater. And of course a dog here. You can also see the heated area where the dog was previously sitting. Looking at the water boiler and some water pipes, some valves and pumps, and a furnace, burning pellets, wood pellets, and the chimney pipe here. And of course, the automatic shutter is on now. More water pipes. Of course this thermal camera also helps you to check where most of the heat is leaking from buildings. 
Now let's test the thermal image super resolution on a different phone and let's try to see a comparison with it and without it. On this one it seems to work. This is a candle without it and with it. In the high temperature mode of course. And a Nixie clock without it. Now with it. Without it. With it. Without it. And with it. One more comparison. Turning it on. Off, on, off, and on. And let's also take a look at some images taken by the camera and a side-by-side -side comparison with the TISR off and on. Here's the dog on a couch, a hot soup on a plate, a pot after cooking, and here you can see some buildings and some cars. Let's put the thermal camera just far enough from the visible camera not to cover it. The visible image should align much better with the thermal image than this way. Nice! After minimizing the distance between the cameras, the transparent mode looks much better. And besides the phone, you can also use it on a computer, which might be useful. Again, the measurements in a polygon, a rectangle, a circle, a line, a point. It also follows the mouse. The reading. You can also take pictures and record videos. And you can analyze the picture from the library. You can add more measurements to a previously taken picture. So that's it. Definitely a very useful tool for quite a lot of situations. Of course there will be a link in the description. Big thanks to Bdon. And if you like my videos please consider subscribing, supporting my channel on Patreon or using the thanks button.